Senior Connections, a show about senior issues and events. A guide to active, independent living. Senior Connections, with your hosts, Margie Toms and Janet Halliday. Welcome to Senior Connections. I'm Janet Halliday, and Margie's taking the day off today. But we are privileged to have with us Nathan Ballantyne and Linda Leak. Nathan is the representative from the Irmo Chapin District, and we are going to have a, a different format today. We are going to be discussing a bill that Nathan has introduced to the legislature regarding dementia and some uh, reprieve, hopefully, for the caregivers. And I'm so glad you could be with us, or with me. I'll say us <laughs> all day, because I'm used to having Margie next to me. But thank you for being with uh, us I'm today. happy to be here. I'd love to, love to lend my name to the, the cause and, and look forward to the day that the bill becomes law, thanks to, thanks to this lady right here and the work that you're doing. So. Well, I, that's what I, I kind of want to tell the audience about how this all got started. So I'm going to just kind of start with you, Linda, um, and, and tell folks how this kind of was all initiated. Well, it started with the, my sister-in-law, um, we discovered some years ago, had Alzheimer's. Uh, dementia and it was getting worse and increasingly worse and we looked at alternatives and things for her and in the meantime I got in a support group um, of which I'm so grateful you were part of and I re highly recommend a support group for every caregiver at any time um, and while I was there uh, many discussions came up about the needs of the caregivers and, and how hard it is to find resources, uh, financial, uh, mental, um, just in general, anything. And through that and many discussions with other caregivers, um, there was a need. And I got on the phone one day to my legislator, um, my Rolodex again, and went to Nathan and said, some, we need some help here. Um, this is a very small thing and we'll just talk about the bill, how it was introduced in a few minutes, but that's really how. And now I am a full-time caregiver and know how important it is to have resources and things our state still needs to do. Right, and um, we did a show earlier um, this quarter with uh, the Forget-Me-Not Ball with the Alzheimer's Association, and I was telling folks then that we have over 250,000 um, caregivers that just care for folks with dementia, and those unpaid hours are equivalent to $3.7 billion a year. So you know that these caregivers are extremely important. Um, and also I wanted to say that AARP just recently uh, put out their um, scorecard, and it says that uh, South Carolina ranks 44th in the support of family caregivers. So I think we have a, a, a long way to go. You know, Janet, that uh, as, a, as an elected official, that's what bothers me a lot about our state. I mean, I'm born and raised here and we, we love South Carolina, but we're at the bottom of too many lists, uh, whether it be education or poverty or things of that nature. You know, when I heard that statistic, and a few years ago I learned about how far behind the curve we are uh, dealing with senior care in particular uh, and our senior citizens, you know, we've got to be proactive in the General Assembly. We can't wait until all of a sudden it's, it's uh, do or die today, so to speak. We have to make sure that we're being reactive and, uh, excuse me, proactive. And, you know, when Linda picked up the phone and gave me a call, I mean, I, th that's what's great about my job. You know, I'm a banker, so I understand finances really well. But this is an issue outside of a little bit when, with my grandmother growing up that I haven't had too much uh, experience with. So I relied on her heavily, and, and that's what makes it work the best when you have caregivers and individuals who experience this on a daily basis who come up and tell you what life is really about uh, in their world. And, and so uh, I'm going to work hand in hand with y'all, and, and uh, we're going to have a hearing soon on this, and I know we'll talk about that later in the show. Right. And what, tell us, Linda, what are some of the other um, grants or, or ways that you, a caregiver can get some kind of financial support? You know, I've, I've learned um, about some respite grants that are available in South Carolina. They're in the budget right now, and what they allow is for caregivers, and it's just not for dementia, Alzheimer's. This encompasses most caregivers um, through our Department of Health and Human Services um, to get a respite grant for up to $500. Um, for them to either use that for care for their loved ones, to use it for some in-home care, possibly taking them to a respite week stay in a facility that can take care of them, um, to give that caregiver 
a chance to recharge their batteries, just to have a break, um, because it is the most stressful job in the world. It's caregiving for a loved one. And we're going to take our first break. And if you need in-home care and if we're looking for someone to provide it, call Comfort Keepers Northeast. Bill Johnson, he'll be happy to provide it. And we'll be right back. Senior Connections brought to you by our premier senior providers offering exceptional services for older adults. Our premier senior providers include Senior Living Guide, serving the Midlands for more than a decade. Life Care Center of Columbia, doing whatever it takes and then some. Harry Crosby, educating people on solutions available for long-term care for almost 20 years. Brookdale Senior Living, providing exceptional senior living for over 30 years. Aging Gracefully, a senior living consulting service. How have these homeowners achieved greater financial flexibility? with a reverse mortgage from a trusted source, MetLife Bank. If you're a homeowner age 62 or older, a reverse mortgage could make a difference in your life too. It is the best thing we've ever done. I am so, so relieved. It really lets me sleep at night. Why not learn the facts today from a MetLife Bank reverse mortgage consultant? There's no obligation. Senior Connections brought to you by our premier senior providers offering exceptional services for older adults. Our premier senior providers include Comfort Keepers of Columbia, comforting solutions for in-home care, anesthesiology consultants, board certified anesthesiologists with more than 400 years of combined anesthesia experience, serving these fine institutions throughout the Midlands for over 25 years. Ornegay and Mosley Funeral Home and Cremation Service, our family serving your family since 1884. Cindy Loma with ERA Wilder Realty, a certified senior real estate specialist. Central Midlands Aging and Disability Resource Center, serving Lexington, Richland, Newberry, and Fairfield counties. Senior Connections brought to you by our premier senior providers offering exceptional services for older adults. Our premier senior providers include Chad Kurtz with New American Mortgage. Welcome back to Senior Connections. We're talking with Linda Leake and Representative Nathan Valentine about a bill that will help alleviate some um, costs for caregivers. And we're going to talk in this segment about the cost of family caregiving. So um, have you got an idea about how, what is the annual amount that caregivers spend out of pocket? Um, somewhere between according to the latest statistics, and I think these were actually 2004 because we're still behind the curve in trying to figure these things out, um, anywhere from twenty-five to fifty thousand dollars. And I don't mean that just in, in, in actual expenses, that's time um, that they take away from their jobs and that's a real expense that they have to be at home or to look after this person if they're still working. Um, and then that also includes the um, actual day-to-day -day help that, that is needed or the survival or the medicines or the um, for them too as a caregiver. Now and when you talk about that kind of the twenty to fifty thousand dollars you're not talking about something that's covered by Medicare or Medicaid or insurance or any that's actually out of pocket. Out of pocket real open your wallet finances that no insurance looks at, talks to you about, or will even get on the phone and discuss with you. Right. Well, it says that um, one in four caregivers of adults report a moderate to high degree of financial hardship at resulting from caregiving. But it, this is really, really important for women because the average caregiver is 48 years of age and female. So tell us how that kind of impacts a woman. Well, it. it she is in the middle of her, if she's working, she's in the middle of her um, earning years and now she's got to cut that back. So she's going to lose part of her retirement, she's going to lose part of her insurance, um, and then the wear and stress on her body takes its toll also. Um, you know, and I'm just going to throw this out because we have a lot of care, we know a lot of caregivers also. Um, you know, one of the things that we really are always frightened of is the caregiver um, going before the patient because the stress and the hardship not only is she taking care of this patient she's still got a family to run children you know it it, it takes its toll 
Right. And Nathan, I just want you to know mm -hmm. for you, <laughs> future reference, <laughs> the next thing we're going to tackle is the importance of these, uh, this to employers. Sure. Um, because this is something that they need to be looking at in terms of addressing. Um, I think I ran some numbers not too long ago that said 53% of the workforce is composed of women 45 years of age and older. Mm -hmm. When you think of this, the one in eight with the potential of coming down with this disease, and I think that uh, the last I read, 100,000 plus people with dementia in South Carolina by 2030, that's a significant impact on our workforce. Yeah, I mean, it's very interesting to hear these numbers again, to, to hear the personal you know, I don't know if y'all would say it, but I'll say the personal burden, if you will. I know you don't d view it in that manner, but um, you know it takes a strain. And you know w the personal situation is one thing, but from my perspective as a state uh, elected official, I mean, if people know uh, the impact on our budget and related to Medicaid beds and things of that nature, anything we can do to help reduce that cost to the taxpayer in, in our general fund budget, as well as uh, you know help. We're not, and we'll talk about this in details. Um, you know, Linda may never benefit from the bill herself personally, um, and the savings in the bill is, going, is minute compared to the overall uh, cost that were discussed there. But I think it's the right thing to do. I mean, this is something that you said touches everybody uh, in South Carolina, and, and we've got to be ready for it. And, and um, I just appreciate every day. I can't imagine being in the shoes of, of individuals. I well, I guess now it's like the blowing out of the candles of the birthday cake. I get, we talk about the bill. Okay, I guess we need to tell them what the bill is. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Uh, well, it, it's House Bill 4483. And again, uh, my constituent, Linda Lee, called me up and, and, and shared what she's sh sharing right now. And quite simply, what it does, is just to keep it as simple as possible, is for a caregiver uh, who is treating a, 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 a patient, a family member, uh, who has Alzheimer's or dementia uh, in, the, in that house, uh, we will, uh, I'm looking to relieve them for the property taxes that they would be paying the state. Right. And I mean, it's a, it's a no-brainer from a, from a uh, standpoint. Uh, we will forego, if you will, let's say $1,000 in property taxes, and we'll be saving thousands of state, state revenue dollars. Um, and so that's, it's, it's a little small gesture, but it goes a long way primarily to, to keep individuals uh, being taken care of at home, which I think we all would agree, and I think we've seen some clinics and some surveys done that say that is the best place right. uh, for individuals. And we're going to take our, I'm sorry, we're going to take another break, but if you are looking for long-term care or you need rehabilitation services, please give Life Care Center of Columbia a call. They'll be happy to, to uh, talk with you, and we'll be back. How have these homeowners achieved greater financial flexibility? With a reverse mortgage from a trusted source, MetLife Bank. If you're a homeowner age 62 or older, a reverse mortgage could make a difference in your life too. It is the best thing we've ever done. I am so, so relieved. It really lets me sleep at night. Why not learn the facts today from a MetLife Bank reverse mortgage consultant? There's no obligation. Senior Connections brought to you by our premier senior providers offering exceptional services for older adults. Our premier senior providers include Senior Living Guide, serving the Midlands for more than a decade. Life Care Center of Columbia, doing whatever it takes and then some. Harry Crosby, educating people on solutions available for long-term care for almost 20 years. Brookdale Senior Living, providing exceptional senior living for over 30 years. Aging Gracefully, a senior living consulting service. Senior Connections brought to you by our premier senior providers offering exceptional services for older adults. Our premier senior providers include Chad Kurtz with New American Mortgage. Welcome back to Senior Connections. We are talking with Linda Leak and Representative Nathan Ballantyne from Irmo Chapin about a bill, um, H, what is it, H44. 83 uh, that Nathan has introduced and you were before we went out on break you were telling us a little bit more about the exchange that you were going to offer for 
Well, yeah. Or, or I guess the exchange in Medicare uh, dollars. Well, what we're looking to do is uh, any elected official should be looking, just like we do at our family budgets, trying to, to look the biggest bang for the buck, if you will, and try to make sure we're using uh, limited state resources the best of uh, the potential we can. Um, in this example, when I was running through the numbers, it seems like if, you know, if we can forego, perhaps give somebody uh, property tax relief, um, and in turn that will actually free up a, 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 a bed in a facility, that is going to save the state a tremendous amount of, of, of money. I mean, the last figures I looked at, uh, just alone we're spending on Medicaid beds uh, at a state dollars is uh, well over a hundred million dollars. Um, and right now those beds, we, we, we've lost about 1,200 beds uh, from, from year to year and now we're around, give or take, 10,000 beds out there. And so with, with the figures that you've mentioned and we know the growing population and, and people afflicted with this particular disease, you know, this, the question is going to be, are we going to be uh, providing more beds in, in the General Assembly for these uh, patients or is there a, a cheaper or a, a better alternative? And I think we've all, you know, we know the better alternative is to be at home with loved ones. And then, of course, there's a financial alternative for the state as well. So if we can forego a dollar, for example, to save, you know, 50 or even more, I think that's something we need to be doing. Right. I think you mentioned businesses earlier. I think any businessman or woman would make that decision, $1 for $50. And, Linda, I know that you have said that you did some calculations. What is the cost, did you say, Correct. for the I Medicare, mean, I mean, Medicaid the Medica bed? It's a Medicaid bed. Um, the Medicaid bed, by allowing this person to stay home saves the state twenty nine thousand dollars per per person. person based on a full skilled care bed being between you know five and six thousand dollars depending on the facility where you are in the state the okay. way that they're funded um, and and that's just exceptional and at the same time we know the best care for these patients with the dementias and the Alzheimer's is going to be to keep them home. The longer we can keep them home, the better their care, and that little bit of funding may help that and the caregivers. Right, and uh, statistically they said that right now 70 percent of the folks with Alzheimer's dementia related diseases are in the home, so we, we do want to keep them here or in the home. Now I also wanted to talk about there actually has been a task force set up called the um, Purple Ribbon Alzheimer's Task Force. I think the last time they met was March the 1st of 2009 and it says that um, aging in place reduces the need for relocation to a different living arrangement and is often a cost-effective option for both families and public program funding long-term care. So we have a list of those people who actually sit on this task force and we hope that these folks will back your bill and we're actually, Linda's going to be in touch with some of them, but they already have this recommendation and it was recommendation number nine and you can go on and Google uh, Blue Ribbon Alzheimer's Task Force South Carolina and pull it up. It's a hefty piece at 59 pages so um, it, it'll give you some vital information. Um, Janet I, and, and I was going to share I, I don't uh, I don't want to say I don't foresee any resistance because you never uh, when you're right. trying to change any law there's going to be some sort of resistance from uh, some in unexpected areas but I have a feeling it'll be a bipartisan support uh, from several people uh, th throughout the state you know is if you think about it uh, Alzheimer's dementia the disease I mean it's not to one particular demographic, it's not to one particular location. It can affect anybody in Charleston, just like it can Greenville, white, black, younger, older, those things. Rich, poor, male, female, I. exactly. Um, and what I've been told is the chairman of Ways and Means, once we get through the budget here uh, in the middle of March, is he will provide a hearing. I certainly encourage, I know y'all will be there and, and any other caregivers that would love to show up so we can hear that personal testimony. Again, we have paying jobs outside of the General Assembly that not necessarily might not be related uh, to what you guys are doing. So you we might need to have hear a house you. full. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. I encourage that. Look forward to that. And we're, she's giving me that signal again. If you have a loved one uh, that is deceased or you are considering doing some pre-funeral planning, please give Greg Mosley a call at Mosley and Corgi and we will return after this break.
Senior Connections brought to you by our Premier Senior Providers offering exceptional services for older adults. Our Premier Senior Providers include Comfort Keepers of Columbia, Comforting Solutions for In-Home Care, Anesthesiology Consultants, Board Certified Anesthesiologists with more than 400 years of combined anesthesia experience, serving these fine institutions throughout the Midlands for over 25 years. Hornigay and Mosley Funeral Home and Cremation Service, our family serving your family since 1884. Cindy Loma with ERA Wilder Realty, a certified senior real estate specialist. Central Midlands Aging and Disability Resource Center, serving Lexington, Richland, Newberry, and Fairfield counties. How have these homeowners achieved greater financial flexibility? With a reverse mortgage from a trusted source, MetLife Bank. If you're a homeowner age 62 or older, a reverse mortgage could make a difference in your life too. It is the best thing we've ever done. I am so, so relieved. It really lets me sleep at night. Why not learn the facts today from a MetLife Bank reverse mortgage consultant? There's no obligation. Senior Connections brought to you by our Premier Senior Providers offering exceptional services for older adults. Our Premier Senior Providers include Senior Living Guide, serving the Midlands for more than a decade. Life Care Center of Columbia, doing whatever it takes and then some. Harry Crosby, educating people on solutions available for long-term care for almost 20 years. Brookdale Senior Living, providing exceptional senior living for over 30 years. Aging Gracefully, a senior living consulting service. Welcome back to Senior Connections. We are talking with Linda Leak and Nathan Valentine, the representative from Irmo Chapin District. And uh, it's a good thing that you all missed the in-between cameras. Uh, uh, we, we were just talking, and I'm going to go to Linda because she wanted to say something about the uh, task force and also about a respite grant. Um, you know, these are two things that are just vitally important in our state, and we are a state that attracts retirees. We want retirees to move here, so this is going to be a growing large segment of our population. I ask people to look around, pick eight friends, look at them, and know that one of them will have Alzheimer's or dementia. That's a granted. That's a given. Um, so in the meantime, it's time to reconvene this task force. And I ask everyone out there, call the governor's office. Ask for this task force to be reconvened for your future, for your children's future, for our state's future. It needs to be addressed. Also, um, in the budget this year, there are respite grants. Um, it is, there's been talk about removing the respite grants. Call the governor's office today. Tell her, do not remove the respite grants. Call your senator. My House members are already supporting it. <laughs> Call yours. This is vitally important because these are for all caregivers. It is not just for Alzheimer's, dementia, but all caregivers. And it's one of the few things that your tax dollars do that will impact many, many people. Now, let me ask you, should they also call their senators? Absolutely. We and don't want to leave them out. <laughs> <laughs> call your senator, call your House member, and call the governor's office. Right. Because, like, I'm very fortunate. Mine responded immediately. He always has. You should have one as good as mine. <laughs> and he really cares, and you can call him too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, this is what I like really about, and, and I love Linda, because she, she knows how to get a hold of me, and, and uh, you know, we can't always agree on everything, and, and we understand that, that's just how life is, but this is what makes the job of an elected official so so uh, rewarding, is to ha hear from your constituents about ideas that are important to them, and to take it down here to Columbia. Um, I look, you know, this task force, it's, you know, I hate that, I don't want to laugh, uh, when I say this, but you know, in the General Assembly, you know, if we don't want to do anything, we'll study it. That's what we do, and we put committees together. And it doesn't shock me this one maybe hasn't met in a while, but I see some names on here. I see Senator Mike Fair. I see Gilda Cobb Hunter. Um, I'm going to go talk to them. I, I would imagine that they would be supportive of this. Um, as I'm going to certainly start with the House. Um, love to see y'all down there again. It'll probably be mid to late March. We've got time to move it through the House to get it to the Senate. Don't get me started on my fellow colleagues in the Senate. They're the deliberative body, so it takes them a little while longer. But if we can at least uh, educate, bring awareness, and move this forward, uh, we can get over there in the Senate. And, and if we can get it passed by June and send it to the governor's desk, I look forward to seeing uh, her sign that. And it be, would really be a great day in South Carolina for that to happen. Right. So. Well, it is an excellent report. Some hefty reading, but an excellent report. They did a good job on it. I can say uh, it, it, it was well written. Um, but I did want to add uh, that this bill already exists in, in a, another format because that bill has 
uh, exemptions for quadriplegic, I think uh, paraplegic, MS, ALS, uh, ALS, um, and muscular dystrophy, and in Parkinson's, and park final stages. So this would really just be an addendum to the bill, just adding dementia. That is correct. A and and also, I want to let folks know that you would have to have a doctor's correct. statement. Sure saying that this person had the disease and that they were residing you know in their home or, or in, in the care of a loved one but it would be for just one property correct, correct. the property that the patient or the the patient lives in or resides in and like you said it's very important people realize it's the doctor has to work with the caregiver to it to set up these exemptions so it's it's not something that's just kind of flinging out there it is it's really needed and um, the doctor and the caregiver make those decisions right and I just want I, some of these will be up on the the screen but in 2004 and again we're behind the time uh, a total per person Medicaid beneficiaries with Alzheimer's age 65 and older were nine times as high as those without Alzheimer's and th that's why this disease is just so you know important and I want to thank you both for being on they're giving me that sign mm -hmm. again um, it was a pleasure everybody call your representative your senator let them know you are behind the bill and pick up your guide uh, or your booklet senior living guide it has now gone statewide it has a lot of wonderful information and phone numbers Thank you for being with us today. God bless and we will see you next week. For more information on the topics discussed on today's show, to learn about upcoming senior events and support groups in the Midlands, or to submit a question, go to SeniorConnectionsSC.com. You can also call us at 803-739-4205. Senior Connections brought to you by our premier senior providers offering exceptional services for older adults. Our premier senior providers include Senior Living Guide, serving the Midlands for more than a decade. Life Care Center of Columbia, doing whatever it takes and then some. Harry Crosby, educating people on solutions available for long-term care for almost 20 years. Brookdale Senior Living, providing exceptional senior living for over 30 years. Aging Gracefully, a senior living consulting service. How have these homeowners achieved greater financial flexibility? With a reverse mortgage from a trusted source, MetLife Bank. If you're a homeowner age 62 or older, a reverse mortgage could make a difference in your life too. It is the best thing we've ever done. I am so, so relieved. It really lets me sleep at night. Why not learn the facts today from a MetLife Bank reverse mortgage consultant? There's no obligation. 